Global financial markets in turmoil as the specter of Greece leaving the Eurozone rears its head again. How justified are the concerns and what has changed since the last time markets worried about a Greek exit? Hello, I'm Taymor Nabili. Welcome to Between the Lines. It's a new year, but it's the same old story. That's the sentiment of traders as Eurozone jitters take hold of the markets once again. And Greece is at the centre of the worries. Greeks are to vote in national elections on the 25th of January. And the polls show the Syriza party is the front runner. Now, this party has pledged to unwind many of the conditions imposed by the EU and the IMF which provided a bailout after Greece's debt crisis in 2010. But as Syriza government would also seriously challenge the terms of the EU bailout and reverse the imposed economic austerity program, raising fears that the country might have to default on its debt and be forced out of the euro. The prospect of a so-called Grexit and expectations that the European Central Bank will soon beef up its stimulus program have caused enough jitters in the market to send the euro to a nine-year low against the dollar. So will Greece 2.0 be as tough on the currency block as the original crisis? Joining me to discuss the possible outcomes, Georgios Kariotis is Senior Lecturer in International Relations at the University of Glasgow. He's also Secretary of the Greek Politics Specialist Group, one of the UK's political studies associations. It's an international network of leading experts on Greek politics. And also joining us, Quentin Peel, Senior Fellow at Chatham House. He's in our London studio. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for being with us. George, if I may begin with you, what do the Greeks think about the possible outcome of this election? Well, the, the, the Greece is once again divided in two main camps. It's a pro-austerity camp, uh, spearheaded by the conservative New Democracy Party that has been in government since 2012, uh, and the anti-austerity camp that uh, is uh, led by uh, Syriza, uh, the left-wing, the radical left-wing party. So the, the, the public is divided. It's not uh, an equal with, division, though, is it? The division is uh, uh, relevant to a bigger paradox. The desire to stay within the Eurozone, mm. a pledge that Syriza itself has uh, uh, adopted, while also ending austerity or at least improving the terms of this, the, the bailout agreements that Greece has already committed to and signed. Right, but my so point was, it's, it's, just, it's not a division down the middle, is it? Because it looks like Syriza is uh, well, well ahead in the polls. Syriza is, a, is, a, is a, in the latest polls appears to be about 3% points ahead in the polls, uh, a lead that is significant, but perhaps narrowing. So uh, although it looks very likely that a Syriza-led government will be formed, and this will also likely need to be a coalition government, because it's, it's not going to be, Syriza will not be able to attract enough support to form its own independent government, uh, there is still an attempt by both domestic elites and European elites to impact upon the outcome of this election by raising fears about what might happen if Syriza leads. And what might happen if Syriza leads? I mean, if it is a, a, some kind of a combination government, do you think they will be able to carry on with the, the platform they've presented? Well, we, we, we are in a situation where we have both sides presenting uh, impossible positions. On the one hand, Syriza claims that they will write off the debt it will cancel the austerity and end the austerity plans in the previous agreements, uh, which uh, uh, is really uh, not a position that can be delivered. Uh, this is not something that the Europeans will agree upon. Uh, this is not something that uh, will likely happen. What is much more likely to happen is that upon elected, if that happens, uh, Syriza's leader Tsipras will be much more pragmatic and realistic and be willing to sit on the table with the European uh, lenders and international partners to renegotiate some terms and make consensus on uh, its positions. The same exactly uh, exists on the other side, the pro-austerity camp. And it's not really the domestic elites that are leading uh, the, this, uh, com this, this, uh, this camp, it's the European and international uh, elites. Mm. It's uh, statements coming from Germany in particular, with Angela Merkel uh, per per allegedly stating that the uh, Eurozone is now prepared to have a Greece exit all right, we'll, we'll, we'll get on to that in a minute, but uh, you're obviously of the muddle-through camp. Quentin, let's come to you. 
uh, I'm reading a lot of opinion which is much more extreme uh, than the, the, the slightly mild uh, opinions here given us to by, us, by Georgia. So what, what is your position? Well, I think there's a certain degree of alarmism around, not least in the city of London, uh, because people remember how bad things looked back in 2011, 2012, the last time everybody was talking about the possibility of a Greek exit. And indeed, the last time, uh, it looked as if Syriza might be uh, emerging from an election as the head of a government. Now, that didn't happen, and I think quite a lot of significant changes have happened since then. One is certainly what we've already, in fact, alluded to, that Syriza is, um, is considerably more reasonable uh, in what it's proposing. That's to say, it's very clear now that uh, Syriza is not saying we want to get out of the euro. What they are saying is we want to renegotiate the terms of the rescue package and make it less severe on the poor Greek uh, voters. So I think that's one big change. And the other change, I think, is that the news from Germany is being rather over-interpreted. I think what they're saying in Germany is we're better prepared for a Greek exit if the worst came to the worst, but we're certainly not pushing for a Greek exit. We don't want to see that. I think Angela Merkel has always been quite consistent that she regarded the threat of a Greek exit, which really can only happen at <coughs> Greece's choice, uh, that would be a very dangerous thing. She's not looking for that. She's saying we're better prepared because we've got the tools to deal with it. Well, you say over-interpreted, and, and certainly there's been a lot of um, deep analysis which uh, sometimes may go down some fairly strange paths. But it's not as if the Germans haven't contributed to that confusion themselves. Let me quote to you what Merkel's advisor, uh, Michael Fuchs, said. He said, there is no potential for political blackmail anymore. Greece is no longer of systemic importance for the euro. I mean, simply to, to, to accuse Syriza of blackmail at this point is fairly strong terminology uh, in the first place. And then to say that, in fact, we don't really care whether you're in or out would, be to fee it would seem to be fairly strong stuff, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, Mikhail Fuchs, one, is not an advisor to Frau Merkel. He is a, a leading member of her party, and he's quite outspoken. Other people in the party, including, rather surprisingly, the Prime Minister of Bavaria, Horst Seehofer, have said speculation about what happens to Greece is certainly not helpful at the present time. What we're waiting for is to see the outcome of the Greek election, and then we can deal with whatever comes up. But the truth is that the ball is in Greece's court, and we shouldn't be making comments about it. Mikhail Fuchs is a very outspoken gentleman and actually a former journalist, so he likes to come out with good sound bites. I don't think you'll find that that is the thinking in the Chancellor's office, and I don't think you'll find it's the thinking in the German Finance Ministry. They're desperate to see things steady as it goes. I'm sure they are, and uh, kicking the can down the road would seem to be one very plausible option for the entire EU at this point. Uh, but, Georges, let me come back to you. I mean, um, as Quentin pointed out there, quite rightly, it's all about what the Greeks want, and it seems fairly clear that the Greeks are pretty angry about what's been going on. For seven years they've been promised that recovery is just around the corner. Um, at every step of the way it hasn't arrived. Uh, and it seems as if they are really the whipping boys of this entire process. They have a right to be angry, don't they? Uh, well, that's exactly the feeling in Greece. Uh, the, the, Greece has been in, in, in recession for seven years. The crisis, uh, the austerity measures have been extremely painful for the people uh, since 2010. Uh, there is a general widespread belief that the measures are unfair. Uh, and uh, also, perhaps more importantly, although for, the very, for, for many years there was uh, a, a, a belief that the measures were necessary and inevitable, this, uh, this argument is starting to lose, um, to lose space. And that's because the austerity measures so far have not brought the promised results. The, the IMF was way, way off on its, uh, on its uh, calculations about the recovery. Uh, the, the economy is recovering, but at a slow pace. And that microeconomic benefit is so far not felt by the individual citizen in Greece, who instead sees unemployment uh, skyrocketing to 25%, the economy shrinking by, by one quarter in the last uh, five years, which is the highest shrinkage in uh, peacetime. 
uh, and uh, there is a widespread feeling of austerity fatigue and mm. uh, something something needs to give there is no obviously the, the series option brings huge amount of uncertainties both domestically and, and internationally but uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 prospect of more of the same medicine right. uh, is itself something that scares uh, the uh, electorate in Greece. Something needs to give. Quentin, I was reading one economist on this issue who, who said even if the interest rate on the bailout is 0% and Greece has a 3 billion euro surplus every year, it would take them 81 years to pay back the debt that they already have. Surely this is not a, a tenable scenario. I don't think it is. And I think eventually uh, there has got to be a, a debt write-off rather than a debt rescheduling. We've had the debt rescheduling. Most of Greece's debt has been pushed way back down the road. Nonetheless, the trouble is for Greece that, that the sheer volume of that debt is so great that most of the money, the, far more than 50% of the money that is coming in supposedly to rescue the Greek economy is actually going straight out again on debt servicing. So something needs to be done there. And I think that if Syriza comes in and says, we want some form of debt rescheduling again, or even debt forgiveness, I think people will feel they have to sit down and consider that. It's not just Syriza that's calling for that. Georgios, let's uh, assume a situation that you posited earlier on, that um, there won't be any major upheaval, that um, Tsipras will lessen his demands a little bit, ease his tone a bit, perhaps he won't even have an, enough of a, a majority in Parliament to be able to get too much through. But where will that leave Greece? If we have a, a situation where muddling through is the only option, that means that the people continue to suffer unemployment rates at enormous proportions, continue to suffer austerity and deflation. Are we going to see more trouble on the streets? Well, trouble on the streets, starting with the last part of your question, is likely to continue, but it will never reach the intensity of 2010, the first year of the austerity crisis in Greece. And that's because there is widespread belief that uh, protest, the mass protest experienced in Greece in 2010 and onwards, does not really impact on developments. So this is this, is, this kind of rational stress calculations about the cost and benefit of participating in protest uh, results in an argument uh, against any more major uh, or continuous uh, uh, upheaval. However, on the political side, you're asking what might happen, uh, uh, how will Greece muddle through? Well, if Syriza gets its way, then this, this will not be what is required. Uh, what Syriza would seek to achieve is to uh, either convince Germany, the, the, the paymaster of the Eurozone, to agree to some kind of right of as Quentin uh, said, uh, or, or um, um, at the same time, uh, improve the conditions for, for the Greek people by lessening the, the, the austerity measures, by increasing minimum wage, for instance, by lowering some of the taxes that have been, uh, have been imported in the last few years, uh, and by letting people uh, breathe uh, financially uh, and seeing uh, a small but perhaps significant from their perspective improvement in their household. All right. Georgios Karyotis at the University of Glasgow, thank you for being with us.